Join me today as we are going to dive into an incredible journey of a young mom from serving in the National Guard to embracing motherhood. Hear her inspiring stories, her triumphs, and even some of her challenges, and discover how her military background has shaped her role as a mom and her dedication to instilling patriotic values in her children. Get ready to be empowered and inspired by this remarkable woman's story. You do not want to miss this one. Hi, I'm Jenna Dix, and I'm always rambling. Just ask my husband. I have a great family and a pretty cool life, but I'm a recovered alcoholic. That's hard to say, but my goal is to inspire and educate to help others hopefully find life beyond an addiction. I'm all things, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, getting healthy, momming, and politics. Get offended easily? You better stop listening. There is no point in wasting that Botox by stressing yourself out listening to a podcast. Welcome to Ramblings of an Addict with Jenna Dix. Today's episode brought to you by products and services that I'm thoroughly addicted to. Are you tired of feeling stuck in your own life? Well, we've got you covered. We have something incredibly special for you. Join our dedicated community of women who are on a mission of personal growth and empowerment through faith and Jesus. We're here to support you, guide you, and encourage you to reach your full potential. Plus, we've recently added a powerful component of community activism to this group. We believe in making a positive impact on the issues that matter, all while embracing our faith. Together, let's become the best versions of ourselves and create a brighter future for everyone. Join the Grit and Grace Rambling Collective today and start your journey towards a healthier, more joyful you. Check the show notes for more information and join today. All right, so I want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's podcast. Today, we have a very special guest. In honor of Independence Day and in honor of honestly just being Americans, being on a podcast where, yes, we are more on the conservative side, we need to make sure that we're honoring those people, the people that have those brave souls that stand up for our freedom. And today I thought there is no better person to ask other than Haley Tomei, who is someone who served in our National Guard. Haley served in the National Guard for six years in Minnesota, and now she has a new title. She gets to call herself Mom. In addition, Haley also works in real estate, so she's a busy lady. But today I wanted to bring her on and share a little bit about her journey through the National Guard and number one, what that taught her, how that inspired her, how she, or what takeaways rather she had from that experience. But in addition, you know, now adding that new title of mom, how her history in the National Guard has shaped how she is momming her children. So with that being said, I want to welcome very warmly Haley Tomei. I want to thank you so much, Haley, and welcome to Ramblings of an Addict. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So, Haley, I'm going to jump right in here, and I'm going to turn it right to you. Tell our audience a little bit more about you. Um. Well, I guess you you touched on my real estate endeavor. Um, yeah. I do kind of all sorts of things in the real estate world. I do um, I do rehabbing. Uh, I don't personally do it myself, but I kind of work the back the backsides of that and I, I manage rental properties as well. Cool. Um, I am a first time mom of Very Jackson. Exciting. Very exciting. And, and yeah, and he's uh he's a year and a half old now, but I started off with actually my two step boys who are eight and the other one's going to be six very shortly. Awesome. So I got I got to get a little bit of a background in what the parenting had looked like before I actually had my first one. 
I can relate <laughs> to that a thousand percent. Yeah, yeah. So that was it. Was fun. It was it was a nice little you know preview, and yeah, awesome. Okay, so eight, six, and a year and a half. You said correct. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and you were in the guard for six years. Do you remember off the top of your head what years? What year you enlisted? I enlisted in 2012. Um, I think it was right out of high school, if not just before I graduated. Okay. So I was old enough to make that decision on my own without having any parental, you know, control over it. So, okay. yeah, right out of high school, 18 years old. Awesome. So 18 years old. Making that decision, what inspired you to pull that trigger and say, I'm doing this, I'm enlisting? So I really, I didn't have a long-term vision for myself and I didn't have really anything going for me. I was working, you know, in the restaurant service industry Okay. and I just didn't have a career path or vision for myself and I had nothing, you know, I didn't have any kids. I didn't have, you know, really an idea of what I wanted to do with schooling. So I was like, why not? I'm going to do this. And then... When I decide what I want to do with schooling, it's going to pay for my college and the benefits. I was I was on my mom's medical insurance and pretty much right around that time, it was like when insurance was really, really expensive. It was like the Obamacare era. Yep. Yep. And she was paying like $700 a month for the two of us. Wow. Yeah. So um, I decided, you know, I can get I can get these free benefits right. and they can pay for my schooling. So why not? It it was a, it was a win-win for both of our situations. Cause she was like, you know, she wasn't going to kick me off, but she was like, this is getting really expensive. So yeah. <laughs> that I mean, that's was, real life. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I love it. I mean, number one, you were, it's not like you were hiding from working. You were already in an industry. You're working in the restaurant industry, which I mean, I've been there a little bit. That's hard work in itself. Um, but then, you know, might as well take it that next step, see what this offers. And yeah, there are some nice benefits and perks that come along with it that could help you in that next adventure. Mm -hmm. It was really exciting too. It felt like I never really went outside of my, my comfort zone. So it was really scary, but it felt good at the same time. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean that, that right there is what stretches us as people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So you enlisted, you pulled that trigger at 18 years old Tell us, you know, a little bit about what your greatest memory or experience was while in the service for six years. So believe it or not, um, basic training or it's more, more known as boot camp, was Mm -hmm. probably one of my best experiences. Awesome. Okay. Um, it is a little bit like what you see in the movies, like they (laughs) are in your face and they're screaming in your face and everything, but I... I created like the best friendships during that time. Like you have nobody else to lean on during that time than the people that are going through with you. Right. And my bunkmate, um, her and I are are very, very different individuals. Like somebody, you know, I would, I would see like in school or something and I wouldn't think that we would become the best friends. Right. But her and I still talk to this day. That's awesome. And it's, it's, it's not like it's, you know, a, consi- a consistent basis, but right. um, she travels a lot and she does make it a point when she's here to let me know. And I make it a point to make sure I'm free for her and we can spend a day together or something. So super cool. Um, just those friendships and relationships are things that you don't, you don't go through with other people. So they're really, really special. Absolutely. So is she from Minnesota or she just travels to Minnesota? She comes here. She's been here twice and they were both for different random circumstances so okay um she didn't come here specifically for me but you know she'll let me know but she does travel a lot it sounds like so well that's awesome yeah um and I agree I mean when you're doing something that that's like that number one very difficult I I give you props I mean if somebody screamed in my face like that I mean I I don't know what I would do (laughs) um but exactly I mean you have to find those people that you can kind of lean on and Cause that's got to just be an emotional drain and in addition to physical, right? Oh yeah. Okay. I pushed myself to physical boundaries that I didn't even know existed. <laughs> that's odd. That had to have been like the coolest feeling though. It was, it was really, 
it felt really good because I'm not, I'm not really somebody who's like super physical and active like that, like on purpose. On <laughs> so. purpose? I like it. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, so you had, I mean, learning about yourself for sure. Um, mm -hmm. so tell me, talked a little bit about the good side of it, but everything, I mean, is, is going to have its bumps. What was mm -hmm. like the most difficult challenge or what was the most challenging thing in the guards? And what did you learn from that or take away from that experience? Um, there were, there were more, more downs than there were ups, I think. Okay. Um, I guess just learning, like, I really didn't enjoy the experience overall, to be completely honest. Um, it was, it was like, a lot of it was not, was not very positive for me. And okay. it's not that way for everybody, but um, you really do have to learn to just kind of deal with it and work through it okay. and just, just try to see the end of it. I guess that's more me trying to see a positive in it, but, yeah. um, there were a lot of negatives and I just, I feel like I missed out on a lot of things. It seemed like a lot of the, the scheduled drills and things that, you know, my two weeks during the summer, cause you do, you know, one weekend of drill a month and then you do yep. two weeks during the summer. Yep. And it felt like all the time those fell on times that were like things I really wanted to be a part of at home. Oh, okay. And, but also that's, you know, I was very young. So right. the things, the things that were important to me then aren't very important <laughs> now, but it, it was really a bummer for me a lot of times. So. Right. Well, in that lean, so trickling back to a conversation you and I were just having before we even started recording, right? Talking about how we both have children that have FOMO. I'm mm -hmm. sure... You know, as you're being pulled weekend after weekend, two weeks during the summer, FOMO was definitely coming into play because you were younger. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. FOMO was a huge part of it. Absolutely. Um, but I like how you, you know, you found the silver lining in that, that, hey, you know, that it at least was a learning experience. I'm sure it taught you a little bit about sometimes priorities suck. <laughs> you have yeah. to go do something that you were committed to even when you don't necessarily want to. Yes, exactly. But I feel like that's, you know, that's motherhood now. For like, sure. I just, I just had, I just had like some really fun plans in a couple of weeks that I had planned. And I was like, oh, well, I don't have childcare, so I can't be there for it. And it was totally a, it was a me, it was a mom, like it was just a for me thing. And, you know, sacrifices have to be made sometimes. So that's Absolutely. what it was. <laughs> yeah. You're just prepping yourself for mom life, right? Basically, basically. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, okay. So let me see here. Talking just a little bit more about the National Guard. I'm going to tweak into, you know, your mom life here in a second, but just kind of getting that whole picture of the guards itself for you. Can you share an experience of when you were in the guard and how it really, you know, shaped you as an individual and as a woman? And, you know, especially let's tweak it too and start you know, how did it also shape you as a mom? We just kind of leaned into one a little bit with the FOMO, but is there one situation in particular that you can think of? Um, I mean, as a mom, it has taught me appreciation. Awesome. And I mean, you, you really, when you're going through those experiences, you really put through a lot of, a lot of scenarios where you realize, wow, I should be appreciative of the things that I have when I'm on my own time and that I can just, you know, I can just walk up to anything and I can have it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess appreciation is a huge one. Uh, just appreciating the family and the friends and everything that you have. And it's just the freedom. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. So like, just to make sure I'm fully understanding. So almost like thinking when you're back in boot camp, right. And you guys, from what I understand, you are very limited to what you're allowed to have. You have a lot of strict restrictions and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm sure that was almost like, for lack of better terms, almost like <laughs> a prisoner coming out of jail. Like, holy crap, I can do it all again. Oh my gosh, absolutely. So like, for example, when we would eat during basic training, it was, you get 10 minutes to eat. Oh right? my word. And you're... You're starving, so and you can't talk. You cannot talk to anybody. You just sit there and you shove your face. <laughs> and 
you're lucky if you get an option to have a graham cracker and that is your dessert. Like everybody would just annihilate the graham crackers because that was like (laughs) the nice dessert, like the sweet thing that you could have. And that was huge. Like that made your whole entire day. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. (laughs) You know, I'm a person over here. Like I, I will eat graham crackers if it's out on the counter, probably just because I have no willpower apparently because you know, well, graham crackers suck. <laughs> they do suck, but it was so good when I was in boot camp. <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, especially if you've had, like, no sweets. I mean, yep. come on. We're we're women. We like sweets, right? I'm not really a sweet person, to be honest. But okay. I was I was, I was, was at that point in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you just needed some joy. I did. I, I, I had to find the joy in the little things, and that... That graham cracker meant a lot to me. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so I'm curious then, with that idea, have you started teaching that to the boys at all? Or is that something you more now as a mom are just trying to keep in the back of your mind as you're going through this journey, which has its own ups and downs? Um, like appreciation, you mean? Y- yep. Or just... yep, appreciation. Yeah, that's that's a really, really big one. Um, that actually might be the biggest one in our house. Okay. Uh, like for example, tonight, like my step boys, they're old enough. They went out to the neighbor's house and okay. I, I swear dinner, dinner time <laughs> is the one that gets me every day Okay. because I have one picky one. I have one yes. that's totally willing to try everything. And I have Jackson mind who is, he'll annihilate his entire plate. No matter what. <laughs> awesome. So I have one of each, I feel like. Yeah. And, but it's also like tonight I made Jackson while the boys were out. Um, He got leftovers tonight and he was fine with that. He really doesn't have a choice because he's a year and a half old. So. Yeah. And then the boys get home and, you know, they, they, they expect dinner within two seconds. I'm like, yep, it has to be cooked first. Okay. You guys right. can kind of wait a little bit. <laughs> yes. Well, this one wants this food and this one wants this food. And I'm like, you guys better agree on it. But right. also I'm like, you need to realize that I'm not going to sit and make three different meals every night or no. four right. for me. Dad, like just appreciate the fact that you guys have food in front of you. And I do try to accommodate to the food that you guys want. Right. And for the most part they do, but, or, you know, it's just like, Hey, I'm doing this like I'm cooking dinner for you right now. Can you wipe up the table after you eat? Right. You know, just th- just things like that. Like, be helpful, be appreciative. Absolutely. And um, I don't know. I don't know if that's a great example, but I I don't know. I try not to push it on people either because I feel like it's almost like a narcissistic thing when you say, "Hey, I did this for you, so you should be appreciative." Yes, I agree. So it's I, it's a very it's a very hard line for me to try to explain, but a lot, they've, they have really been saying thank you a lot at dinner time. Like every time I make dinner, which is every night, but every night they say thank you. That's awesome. And it took a little, it took a little bit to get to that point. So. Yeah. But that's awesome. And that, I think that's a struggle that any mom listening, I mean, we've all been there and it, exactly. It's like, we're not short order cooks. I'm not cooking 10 different meals for the family today. Get it together and just eat what I put on your plate. But the fact that you are trying to accommodate a little bit as much as you can, but then also teaching them as well. Like, okay, not only saying thank you and being appreciative, but hey, do your part too. Like, hey, can you wipe the table up when I'm done? I love mm-hmm. that. Yep. And I do, you know, I wash I wash and dry laundry. Okay. Um, I put away some laundry, but I do make the older boys put away their own laundry. Absolutely. Like, hey, I washed and dried it for you, which obviously you can't do yourself, but, you know, be appreciative that I did that part for you because <laughs> I honestly think that, that men should grow up and know how to how to take care of themselves, too. So, Amen. Absolutely. I'm, I'm trying to raise little responsible men. I love it. Exactly. So that when they get married someday, those wives come back to you and they're like, thank you so much, Haley. <laughs> yep. And they will. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, so you're already passing down that awesome piece of appreciation for the boys. Anything else that you can think of that you learned from the military that you're really trying to pass those values down to your three little men? 
Um, willingness to help and participate, which, you know, we kind of touched on that a little bit, but Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, if I ask, if I ask something, it's, Hey, can somebody do this? And it's kind of like in the military was always like, I need a few people to volunteer for this. Okay. And it's all, it was always a thing. Like so many people would sit in silence and it was like the same two people that would be like, I'll do it. And It really wasn't a hard thing. People just want to be lazy. Right. People just don't. People just want to sit there and be lazy and they don't want to be a team player. So it is really important that you you teach them, in my opinion, to be willing to help in situations and be a team player. Absolutely. And I mean, even if that means the team right now is just, you know, the family of five. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that. And you hit it on the head. I mean, I I see it, you know, every day in the different realms I'm in. Like, yeah, there's a lot of people out there that just want to be lazy. And it's like, no, let's teach responsibility and you got to do your part, too. Yeah. And that carries on into their, you know, hopefully careers one day. Yeah. The more you're willing to help and help people and you're willing to learn and just be a team player, the further you're going to go with that. Absolutely. And hopefully not be taken advantage of along the process, but... You know, right. <laughs> it's a good trait to have. Yeah. I mean, there's got to be a balance because exactly. You don't want people just walking all over them, but <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> which I mean, I know you a little personally and I think you got that spunk that's going to come through and help them with that other side of it. Right. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Absolutely. Um, okay. So we talked a little bit about the values that you're passing on right now in today's society. It just feels like, you know, there's a variety of parenting styles that we've all heard about. You know, there's the helicopter parent, there's the like hands off parent, there's the parent that's like um, the, the permission asking. I can't even remember what it's called. I just remember there's a parenting style I researched one that was like, make sure you ask your child permission for everything. Like, can I change your diaper now? And it's like, that was not my style. Um, but I'm curious with your military background. Did that influence the way you decided, like, how you're going to parent? Because the military, let's face it, you know, the military has done great things for the U.S., but they're pretty hardcore. So I'm curious if it influenced your parenting style as a whole. Um, yeah, there there are a lot of values. And actually, in the military, there are, what is it, six, seven? There are seven values. Okay. Big values. And it's loyalty, duty, respect, Selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. Awesome. Okay. So um, I just wanted to touch on a few of those. Well, actually, all of those a little bit, but I won't be long on them. Okay. So for loyalty, I feel like just just being a loyal person overall to the people who deserve your time and your efforts. You don't have to be loyal to everybody, but, you know, just, just be a good friend and, you know, a good family member or whatever to the people who really, really deserve it. Absolutely. For duty, I feel like just do what you're expected. Don't cut corners. If somebody asks you to do something, you know, it doesn't have to be just anybody in the world that asks you, obviously. But right. if you're expected to do something, just do it the right way the first time. Don't cut corners. It's just yes. going to, you know Amen. what I mean? Yeah. Don't be lazy. Just do it the right way the first time. <laughs> you're going to have to redo it otherwise. <laughs> oh, exactly. You're just, you're just shooting yourself in the foot on that one. <laughs> So, exactly. oh, and there we have another military term for you. Exactly. <laughs> um, as far as respect goes, I don't, I feel like a lot of people may or may not agree with me on this one, but I feel like respect is really important. And I feel like everybody deserves respect until they don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, unless you're given a reason not to respect somebody, Don't go out of your way to just be disrespectful. Um, A quote that I have seen floating around quite a bit is treat the garbage man the same way you would treat a CEO. Yes. That one is important to me. Like, just be a kind human, you know, just be nice to people. Exactly. It's like, it's harder to go out of your way to be disrespectful to people than it is to be respectful. I agree. Um, The other one is selfless service. Okay. Okay. Bottom line, you don't always come first. Yeah, no kidding. You don't always come first. And, you know, that's just, that's a a realization that I think is really important as well and a characteristic in people 
Um, it applies in certain situations. A lot of time it's important to put yourself first too, like as a mother. Yeah. Um, we don't always put ourselves first, but there are a lot of times where we do have to, because if we don't, we're not going to be the moms that we need to be to our kids. Yep. I think um, it's a coach. I understand that a thousand percent. <laughs> right? I know. We Sometimes we have to be selfish. Like a we just bit, have yeah. to. I mean, end of the day, we need to honor our temple or otherwise we're not going to be able to keep up with those kids anyway. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the other one is honor. Um, it's just, it's more just be the type of person that you would want people to look up to. Yes. Plain and simple. That's it. Yep. Um, integrity is just do the right thing. Yeah. Just do the right thing. Whether Like you, you. Typically, most people have a feeling of, you know what the right thing to do is. Just do it. Mm hmm Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of a common sense thing, I feel like. Just be a good person. Right. We hope it's common sense. Uh, we, <laughs> we could go on a whole other tangent about <laughs> that one, but... <laughs> we definitely could. <laughs> but I won't get too deep into that. <laughs> we'll save those weeds for a different day. Right, right. <laughs> And, <clears throat> sorry, the last one is personal courage. Okay. It's just, just do things that might put you out of your comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. And maybe even a little bit or maybe a lot of it. It depends on the circumstances. But mm -hmm. the more you put yourself out into a situation that's a little bit out of your comfort zone, you're never going to know yeah. what it could lead to. Yeah. And you could grow. You could grow immensely as a person the more you put yourself out of your comfort zone. Yeah. So it's it's a big growth thing. And I think that's really important as well. Don't just keep yourself secluded into a little bubble that is just your little comfort zone because I don't think you grow that way. Yeah. I have a question. So yep. I agreed with all those a thousand percent. That mm -hmm. last one got my mind thinking a little bit because, so here's the deal. That's how I am trying to train up our girls too. like push your comfort zone. And with Haley, I'm able to do that a little bit more, I think, because she's a little bit older. I've, you know, I've seen the track record, but even with her, I mean, there's been points and obviously with McKenna, I'm like, okay, I want to push them outside their comfort zone. But then as a mom, I get scared. I think more than they get scared for them. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. So I'm yep. not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> so I think no, that I... reminder for moms too, like, yeah, they need to push their comfort zone. Stop holding them back. It's like a double-edged sword at the same time. Like, they're putting themselves in an uncomfortable situation, but you're kind of trying to push it a little bit. Yep. Um, in certain situations, you're not going to put them in harm's way. But, yes, exactly. You know, hey, if you want to go do the talent show, you should do it, you know? But then you're like, as a mom, you're like, well, what if they do awful and everybody <laughs> makes fun of them at school? Yes. So, it's yeah, but as a mom, oh, my gosh, I <laughs> never understood what worrying was until I had Jackson so it's mm -hmm. yeah. crazy how much I worry so yeah yep. that, yeah <laughs> I just found that ironic I'm like I totally hear you and I'm all about pushing those comfort zones but when now we're making our little pride and joys push theirs there's a whole new fear that comes into play oh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, that yeah. Is, I yeah, that's I've never heard something so true, and I didn't think about it like that. But you make a very good point. So well, now you just gave me another thing to have anxiety about. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that was so not the goal of today, but you're welcome. I mean, we have to, you know, be in the pits sometimes with each other. I guess. <laughs> oh, I'm just giving you a hard time. Um, um, well, no, I love that, and exactly, I like how you're able to pull all seven. You call them the seven values, right? Yep. I love how you're able to really intertwine those into just your life moving forward. And I think obviously the, the military has its goal with, you know, it, getting it intertwined into their military for success. But mm -hmm. exactly. I'm sure each of you as individuals can then walk away and bring that into your lifestyle, which is awesome. Absolutely. Um, okay. So with the holiday coming up, I mean, Patriot feels are on fire for a lot of people. Um, I'm curious, with having that military background, how do you feel about the importance of patriotism, and is that impacting how you're raising the boys? Um, right now, not so much. Okay, because I feel like they're they're so young. I mean, our oldest, yes, he would he would be the one to actually sit and take it in. Okay, 
But uh, the other two would be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care what you're talking about. I'm not listening. So, <laughs> and I mean, you can't really see. You can't open their ears for them either. No, you, know what I mean? you cannot. Not at all. <laughs> so I think you know, with with these next coming like military holidays and stuff, we'll we'll definitely touch on it, or I will at least. But um, right now, it hasn't been a really big topic for us. Okay. Yeah. But as they're growing up, yes, it's definitely going to be more of a topic and discussion. Awesome. And, and every family does it different. And I mean, you're going to know your kids learning styles a hell of a lot better than anyone else, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm curious then moving forward, you know, thinking of the military and honoring the military and, you know, taking it far a little bit further because I mean, you know, I'm a conservative and we are all about honoring men and women of uniform, pretty much any type you know what I mean back the blue uh-huh. those types of mentalities um I'm curious how you plan on teaching you know because you have a special background Haley that I don't have I don't have that piece of the military in my background that has a deeper understanding I guess so it's like I just teach the girls like honor the soldiers do your best you know mm-hmm. I'm yeah. curious you know how do you plan on incorporating that for the kids do you have any ideas um I mean as far as like supporting service members yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. So supporting them or if you've had any thoughts about like what you want to teach them. Um, I think it's important for them to know that that these people basically sign their life away. Yeah. And you are not your own person when you belong to the government. It is you 100 percent belong to the government. And uh, there's a lot of things like you you can't even put out on social media you can't speak your own mind you can't do a lot of those things um interesting yeah yeah i I remember i remember there was one time i think right after i joined i wasn't officially like haven't hasn't gone to boot camp yet or anything but um i posted something about (laughs) i think it was obama okay okay (laughs) (laughs) on my facebook and one of my recruiters was like you can't really be saying stuff like that on the internet. You know that, right? And I was like, what? And they were like, yeah, that is your, that's the president. Like, they are your highest (laughs) command. And I was like, oh, my God. No. I didn't know that. I mean, it makes sense now that you say it, but I did not know that. I didn't know that either. And I still, honestly, I still wouldn't think that because I am somebody who's voting, technically. Do I not get my opinions on it? But... Right. I guess apparently you can get in trouble for stuff like that. So interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here like jaw, like on the ground. Like I, it makes sense. Like you said, I mean, cause if you think of the hierarchy and command, y- yeah, they're top of the line. Yep. <laughs> well, like, I feel for our military they're... right now. <laughs> yeah, they're like they are your highest of command, and you're you're sitting here on Facebook talking shit about them. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, oh goodness, I would. Yeah. It, well, that. So of course, like I'm gonna jump in the weeds here for a moment. I'll come back. Yeah. My brain just went though because there were a lot of military people last year that were struggling with the ones that were like, "Dude, I am not for getting the vaccine. I don't want it." But yeah, mm-hmm. no wonder a lot of them then were quiet because if they were being told you can't post anything against the government because that's essentially your, you know, your lineage of command. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes a lot more sense to me. I didn't have that insight. Okay. I actually want to piggyback off of that a little bit. Okay. So I remember one day, so we are basically forced to get all of these vaccinations, right? Yep. I knew that. Yeah. And- and, and I think everybody knows that it's not a secret. Like it's, right. and I'm not, I'm not saying anything negatively about it. We signed up, we basically knew, but yeah, I remember one day there was somebody in the office and they were saying that they refused to get like a flu shot huh. because it was, it was against their um, religion. Oh, and yeah. I mean, I really think that they were just playing off of that and just saying that, but okay. And command was was basically like, yeah, well, fuck your religion. <laughs> you got to do this. Okay. You are owned by the government now, so you don't get a choice. And, oh. yeah. 
not saying that they don't care about their religion because most of the time, you know, there's other aspects. But yeah. as far as vaccinations go, they they don't really get to say. Yeah, there's no medical or there's no religious exemptions. Um, as far as the vaccinations go, no. Okay. No. Nope. I mean, medically, medically, that is. You just you get you get what they tell you. Got it. Well, yeah, and then that makes much more sense with like the recent vax situation that went down with the military. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Um, and ugh, I hear you. And it, with you guys being in the service, obviously that's a little different, but I can tell you it's so frustrating when <laughs> you feel like social media, it's such a dumb thing, such a dumb thing. Let's be real. Yeah. But when there's moments where somebody's like, Oh, please don't post that. Or don't talk about that on there. It's like, wait a minute. What? That's my right. I can say whatever the hell I want. And sometimes yeah. it's like, there's validity and like, yeah, I get it. But it's still just like, wait a minute. This is America freedom. Right. <laughs> the, the irony in it. Yeah. I'm yes. like, are you going to go tell Obama on me or <laughs> is he going to discharge me from the military before I'm technically even in? Yeah. No kidding. So, obviously, they watch your guys' social media pretty much, like, pretty carefully. I think if if you're friends with them, which I ah, gotcha. was, I was very much adding just, like, everybody on social media back then. <laughs> but now, in my mom phase of life, I'm, like, deleting people. I'm like, I don't know who you are. You don't have rights to see my kids' pictures. And, yeah, you know, so... Yeah, I was adding everybody all the time. I was like, hey, I met you at the bar. Not going to remember you tomorrow, but I'm still going to add you on Facebook. <laughs> and now I'm like, I'm pretty sure I met you at the bar and I don't remember you, but I'm deleting you. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've had those moments myself. <laughs> like, why did I add this weirdo? Who is this? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um. Okay, so... I heard a little bit about where you are standing with teaching the boys about patriotism and you know, service in general. I'm curious if you have any advice for other moms on how to instill that sense of patriotism in kids. Um, not, not directly with like the military, but just more of the values that we discussed before. Yeah. Um, just basically trying to raise, to raise well-rounded, just good humans with good morals. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that's, I mean, I don't really have much else to say on that one. I think that's kind of, those, those values are really, really good ones to live by. Yeah. Outside of the military even, so. For sure. And I mean, just as humans, as adults, though, if, if a fraction of our population lived by those values, I think our world would be in a huge, hugely different spot. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And common sense. I think that should be added to the values as well. I agree. (laughs) (laughs) If we can bring common sense back, I think things would turn around pretty instantly. (laughs) I can't even tell you how many times to like, like the kids will just talk to me and they'll ask me questions. And I'm like, I know they just want to talk and they want to engage, but I'm like, you're asking questions that you already know the answer to. Yeah. Right? So, you know, I'm just like, and I'm, I try to do it without being offensive or being mean or whatever, but I'm like, we're going to use your common sense. We're going to exercise that part of our brain. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Oh, and you think, you think I'd be used to it because, you know, I, I love my sister through and through, but that's how she was. I remember like her getting yelled at by family members. Like you're just asking questions to talk. And I remember laughing as a kid, being like, ha she's getting yelled at, you know? And now, <laughs> God is punishing me because now that is what my daughter does. <laughs> and I think it's like they just want to engage and 100%. they just want to they just want to talk and they want attention. And that's totally fine. Yeah. But I'm like, we're also going to, you know, we're also going to use their common sense. And I'm going to do it without being offensive or mean or talking yes. down at them. But I'm like... You're asking me this question, but you know the answer. Yes. Oh, a hundred percent. Oh, that drives me bananas or tattling or, but yep. Yeah, and you nailed it. Like they just want to engage. They just want to be acknowledged. 
right? And that's totally okay. That's yeah. totally okay. Yes. But sometimes it does drive me nuts because I'm like, you're asking me what we're having for dinner and you clearly see me making you tacos. <laughs> So why are you asking? Or sometimes I'll be like, Haley, what time is it? And I'm like, there's 17 clocks in this house. Right? <laughs> oh my God. And what, I'm sorry, What does it really matter what time it is, sweetheart? <laughs> and it's, it's, it's cute. I think they really just want, and I, I appreciate that as a stepmom too, because they yes. really do want to engage with me and they want my attention. So I do appreciate it. Oh, sure. <laughs> I just, I do have to be like the common sense portion of it. <laughs> Let's look at the three clocks that are in the kitchen that you just asked me in the kitchen about. (laughs) Well, you're setting them up for success because if they have common sense, they're going to be a notch above a lot of other people. (laughs) (laughs) So sad to say it. Oh, my goodness. Well, we just, I mean, we got to keep doing what we're doing and hoping other moms are doing the same thing, right? We really can hope and pray. Yep, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Okay, so I'm curious, with your experience in the guards and being a mom, because you're going to have a better insight than, you know, me. I remember back in the day, my mom doing like, um, uh, what are they called? Care packages for the troops, right? Mm -hmm. Did they actually get to them? Uh, I'm guessing, probably, right? But in our way, it was in our mind, like, okay, that's our way of supporting the military as a family. I'm curious Mm -hmm. if... Through your experience, if you learned of any ways that families can really dive in and support the military? So, um, I mean, as far as being in the military, I was never like active duty or I never actually got deployed. But uh, one of my exes was deployed at the time and I was with him. And Mm -hmm. I actually had a bunch of people donate around Christmas to... uh, you know, send me stuff or give me stuff or, you know, whatever that we could donate and send a care package over to over the holidays. Awesome. So I think holidays are a really, really hard one for them overseas. Um, something, something like that is probably really huge. Even if they don't know who you are, if they even just get like letters or if they get like, you know, kids color pictures, you have a lot of parents that are overseas and I can't even imagine what it would be like to be overseas without my kids. No way. So probably getting stuff like that, you know, like pictures from kids and letters and, you know, yeah. they're just, they just have such a little like special touch that you don't get over there. For sure. So, um, that's huge. If you see anybody in uniform and you're like at the gas station and they're buying, you know, like a coffee or a candy bar, um just offer to buy it for them you know something like that yeah it is it is very i will say and it sounds really weird to say but the amount of people that say thank you for your service like we do appreciate it but it's awkward because we don't know what to say back Ah, like okay because we i think it's almost like that selfless thing it's almost like well what are we supposed to say thank you like we decided to do this so saying thank you almost sounds selfish and weird I got it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, just, just little, little things like that. If you buy somebody coffee, they're in their uniform at the, at the gas station. I can't tell you how many people have done that for me. And that like made my entire day. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So paying it forward and j- just that little, it, exactly. I mean, I did a podcast on that. I think like two weeks ago, it truly is the little things. Sometimes those small acts of kindness that are so often forgotten that make a huge difference. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I like that. And exactly. If you have kids and I mean, I don't know about you and I don't know where Jackson's at, but like McKenna can sit down and color about 15 pictures in like 10 minutes. And what the hell do I do with them other than throw them in the garbage? So yeah, (laughs) exactly. I mean, maybe, you know, send that over to a soldier or something like that. (laughs) Give them a piece of toast. If I get another picture from daycare with two scribbles on it, I might lose my mind. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. It's like, okay, good job, honey. But in my head, I'm thinking, really? You couldn't have told her to, like, color on the paper a little more? <laughs> or couldn't you guys just, like, shred this or recycle it or something? Like, I don't want the two scribble picture. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. But I'm also 
also like you guys send me 17 pages a week of just one scribble and <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. Right? I also feel guilty throwing it away. Oh. So mom hack, and I don't know, other moms out there might think that I'm a jackass, but what I've started to do is I take pictures of all her crafts or pictures, and there's an album on my phone labeled McKenna's Crafts, and the craft itself goes in the garbage. Oh, that's a good idea. Because then I have pictures. I can always go back and look. Yeah. But it's not cluttering up my house. But it's cluttering up your phone with one scribble. Yeah, but I mean, I pay like two ninety nine, and I have a huge space on the cloud, so. I suppose McKenna's at the stage, though, where she probably draws a lot more than <laughs> it does. It depends on the day. I mean, yeah. there's some days I look at her, I'm like, do you want to color? No, Mom, that's boring. I want to watch TV. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Give me a screen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Give me a screen. <laughs> oh. today, me, today, me and Jackson were, I was trying to do the dishes. Mm-hmm. And he loves to help me with the dishes. Oh, that's awesome. Absolutely loves it. So I'm trying to do the dishes, and I'm like, okay, can we sit down and color? Because, you know, there's knives and forks and, you know, yeah. things that totally terrify me. Yep. But um, I'm like, let's sit down and color. So I tape him a little, you know, picture down from yep. the, car, the car's book, and he's, like, slapping down at the table next to him. He's like, oh, you're sitting next to me, and you're coloring. <laughs> Come on, mom. You said, yep, can we and I'm color? Sure he's, he's hardly coloring himself. He wants me to color the whole thing. So, well, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there myself more than I'd like to admit. <laughs> yeah. No, mom, you can color too, you know. I'm like, well, yep. yeah, I know I can, but this was for you to stay entertained for a minute, dude. Yeah. But, like, there's 35 dishes in the thing, so, but I guess they can spit. It's fine. <laughs> yep, exactly. Sometimes you just got to, like, cut the slack, right? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, okay. So bring it back. So as a military veteran, as a mom, how do you find strength and inspiration in your journey and use it to honestly, let's just say empower everyone you're coming to contact with, whether it's the boys, your honey, people at work, how are you finding strength and inspiration in life? Um, I think that You know, a lot of days we don't have the strength, but we can look to the people around us that do have a little bit more of the strength than we do. I love that. Yeah. And we can use that to, you know, kind of be a team effort. Yeah. Um, As moms, I think we have a little bit more of that effort to put things aside and be a mom first. Exactly. Um, There's so many days I feel like I am just... I can't keep my eyes open anymore, but people need to be fed and things need to be done around the house. And somehow I find it. (laughs) Yep, exactly. So, um, but I do, I think it's really a team effort. And I think our family in my house has a really good thing going where, you know, me, me and me and Nick can read each other where if I'm pretty much done and I'm burnt out, he knows that. Okay, cool. That's huge. Yeah. It's a team effort. Exactly. And I mean, it kind of brings me back to your, I think like one of the first questions we talked about where you had your, you know, your, your bunk mate, your person you could lean on. And Mm -hmm. in real life, when you're parenting, who better, I mean, it's literally your bunk mate, right? Like you're sharing a legit bed. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. You're each other's support system through and through. Yep. I love that. Um, Support systems are really important. I think everybody needs one of those. And I think that's a huge contribute con- contribute to the things that you can accomplish. Absolutely. I mean, seriously, nine times out of ten, if you have a solid system in play, it's going to help you move further. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, okay, so... With the theme of the show, obviously, Ramblings of an Addict, I think you know my personal testimony a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm curious, have you ever been addicted to anything? And if so, was it a challenge you um, accepted or was it something you were just totally okay with? And what did you learn throughout the experience? Um, I mean, during my military experience, I don't, I don't think I was addicted to anything per se. I was in my 20s. I think I lived out my 20s. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I get it. I didn't I didn't have 
any any responsibilities besides myself. Yeah. So exactly. And I was told by a lot of like I worked, you know, I worked in the service industry. Yeah. My job that I worked at at that time, the earliest shift was three p.m. Wow. Okay. And they closed. The latest we closed was at ten p.m. Okay. So. With those hours and with my age, oh my gosh, I was at the bar all the time. I was drinking. <laughs> yep, I would be, would have been too. <laughs> and I don't want to say that it was an addiction at that point in my life because I was in my early 20s and I was just trying to live my life. Yeah, you're a part, yeah. I get- and I think a lot of people, a lot of people that I worked with that were older than me, you know, I mean like 30s, 40s also told me they were like, you know, you're kind of reckless, but you're also <laughs> doing the things that I wish I could have done because I didn't get the chance to. Like, you're right. just living your life. Yeah. Getting it out of your system. Yeah, exactly. Um, As far as addiction now, I do think I still like to drink quite a bit more than I need to. Okay. And I don't know. I think being being a mom plays a lot into that and hopefully that doesn't sound too negative but Mm -mm. me and Nick had this discussion actually yesterday it was like I don't have anything that is for me anymore yeah I have a huge huge void in my life that I don't know what to do with but I also can't go anywhere and do anything with it right you have a new identity you're trying to create and it's not even my identity it's not an identity that I can control right so it's, you know, completely. I, and I think everything you just said, number one, I mean, I think back in the day, I faintly remember running into you at a bar one time <laughs> and doing, oh a, shot, <laughs> and doing a shot with did. you. <laughs> I was like just t- freshly 21. Uh huh. You're very young. So, yep. um, yeah. So we ran into each other at the bar one time. And exactly, you were living out your 20s, you were young, and and love it or hate it with this comment, right? Because I do have people that listen to the show that do because of the tendency piece. I am of the mindset, too, like, you're going to live your life. Like, I tell Haley, my Haley, all the time, the same thing. Like, you're going to live your life, just don't be stupid about it, right? You're going to yeah. fu- you're gonna fuck up, period. Yeah. Um, And then when you're talking about the momhood piece, like... I did a podcast on that. I can't, I off the top of my head, I can't even remember what episode, but about the mommy wine culture and how it truly, number one, it's like totally becoming just the thing. Like exactly. We're basically being told like, not that we have to, but like, yeah, it's totally okay. Drink, drink, drink. Right. And not, and it sounds like that's not where you're at. Like you're being like, I know that I, you know, it's not the best, but I also can't figure myself out a hundred percent. And I think that's why the culture is playing off that because as women, we are so stuck right now. Like I'm supposed to be working yet. I'm supposed to be a mom. Yet I'm supposed to be a mama bear. Like we have so many pieces going and it's like, but wait a minute, wasn't I just a normal human? Like a year and a half ago, what happened to that human? Yeah. It's, it's really, really hard to differentiate where, I'm supposed to be in my life right now. Yeah. Um, But I also don't agree that, you know, drinking is the number one option, but I also don't sit and get drunk in front of my kids either. It's like, yeah, once everybody's taken care of and gone to bed, then I'm going to take care of myself. (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) yeah, absolutely. And um, I 100% appreciate you being honest and sharing that and bringing it up because you're far from alone. I mean, I talk to moms all the time in different spaces, whether it be, you know, politicals I run into or people of, you know, from different Christian groups that I'm in or things like that. And it's a struggle so many moms have. Number one, the identity piece. And then number two, coping with it with, you know, I had a glass of wine and that glass of wine turned into three. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. You know? Yeah. So I get it. Like, you're far from alone, Haley. (laughs) And I mean, cleaning, honestly, cleaning is just so much more fun when you have a wine glass involved. So, <laughs> <laughs> and once the kids go to bed, I feel like that's what I'm doing or laundry. So I'm like, well, let's not just pair it with a glass of wine. Why don't we? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm sure like the fact that you're acknowledging it though, and you're talking about it and you're like, oh, 
yeah, I need to figure out my identity. And like you talked about earlier, like the schedule thing happens. So unfortunately you don't get to full out do the mom thing you plan, but like, it sounds like you're trying to set things up for you because you know, the importance is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. So my last question for you with the patriotic holiday coming right around the corner, you do have the military background. So I mean, kind of a, a tie there that has to be, you know, an emotional tie. I think a lot of military people have, you know, what do you and your family have planned for the 4th of July? We are doing a ton of cookouts. Awesome. Okay. Just spending time with the people that really matter to us. I love that. Yeah. And yeah, family is important. And, you know, I think it's, it's important for, especially my kids to, know their grandkids or know their grandparents yep yep and you know we just get to my my parents live an hour away from us so I don't I don't get to see them a lot either but um yeah just really really try to spend time with our family and friends and the people that mean most to us so that's awesome absolutely I mean you mentioned that you know back I think in one of the values in the military like honoring those people that deserve the time and a lot of times family members definitely fit that mold Mm-hmm. So when we not all a, of them, but the ones that deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear that a thousand percent. <laughs> I could echo that over and over too. So, um, and, and exactly. And, you know, and not feeling guilty about it being like, Hey, I'm going to spend the time with the family that deserves the time and who I want influencing my family and my kids. And yeah. I'm going to enjoy the holiday with the people that I fucking care about. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. And maybe some fireworks, right? We will probably have to get some fireworks, yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, every year my husband makes me freaking nervous because I'm like, he's going to light himself on fire. <laughs> but <laughs> you got to do it. I mean, my my daughter, I don't know if you've ever seen the video. If you haven't on YouTube, the one that's like, back it up, Terry. And it's a guy. In a, yes. Yes. I love that video. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So my husband last year bought the shirt. And that's what he wore on 4th of July last year. But it's awesome because, like, McKenna, whenever fireworks are going off, she's going, back it up, Terry. (laughs) (laughs) I love her. She is so spunky. Oh, spunky. Yeah, that, like, hits the tip of the iceberg. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well... I want to definitely be respectful of your time. I know as a mom, our time is precious. So I'm going to wrap up this interview. Haley, I want to thank you so much for being here. And I hope you enjoy your fourth. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me here. And I hope you and your family enjoy the 4th of July as well. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Ramblings of an Addict with Jenna Dix. Remember, if you are battling an addiction, reach out for help and support. There are many resources available to assist in your journey towards recovery. Surround yourself with a supportive community and never give up on the path towards a healthier and happier life. I appreciate you taking the time to listen and joining me on this journey. As you heard, I'm always rambling. But seriously, thank you for your support and make sure to subscribe and follow my channel. I can't wait to share more with you on the next episode. Until then, keep on rambling. found this podcast helpful and want to dive deeper into personal growth and self-improvement, be sure to head over to my website, jennadix.com. You'll find a wealth of resources there. There is a little less drug, sex, and rock and roll these days, but whether you're interested in getting healthy, information on momming or parenting, or politics, jennadix.com has something for everyone. So what are you waiting for? Head to jennadix.com today and start your journey towards personal growth and self-awareness. See you there.